I uh, was sitting quietly uh, in uh, uh, chambers uh, in uh, Australia on Saturday and I received a message from Lewis Montague saying, could you come over to Bali? Now, there was a small problem um, that I had to depart from arranging flights, which I did quite easily. I had a court case listed for today and I gave the court case to uh, my associate, who's 25 years of age. The grad, uh, she graduated from professional school a year ago. And she just sent me a text message while Lewis was talking to say that we won the case. And so. Nah, jadi sebetulnya ketika beliau ditelepon oleh Louis Montague, beliau itu di tengah-tengah ada kasus dan karena kata Louis di sini adalah sangat penting sekali, ya udah dia beliau serahkan uh, kasusnya ini kepada asosiatnya dan uh, beliau datang datang sini dan dengan senang hati ternyata asosiatnya baru umur 25 tahun tapi ternyata kasusnya menang, jadi beliau sangat senang. Now, I uh, represent the humanitarian organisation. I work uh, in league uh, with Louis uh, Montague. Uh, the humanitarian organisation is recognised as a non-government organisation by the United Nations and is very much involved in human rights and, uh, to use a common expression, world peace, harmony throughout the world, pluralism, which uh, I understand uh, is a sensitive issue with some groups uh, in Indonesia. Um, now, you might think, what's a lawyer doing dealing with human rights issues? Lawyers uh, see things from a legal perspective, and Anand was convicted using the law, and we're going to have to use the law to undo what has happened here. So that's that's my role to to look at to look at the law. Uh, by profession, I'm a constitutional and international lawyer. I travel to various countries on various uh, issues, and uh, uh, as my old university printed on their website in relation to my career, I'm the sort of lawyer that clients are happy to see when I arrive, and governments are happy to see me leave. Jadi, jadi mewakili humanita, humanita ini adalah sebuah NGO yang memang uh, fokus pada human rights juga sebetulnya juga kreditas, perbunalitas uh, agama di sini kerjasama dengan Natural World Organization dan di mana Natural World Organization juga adalah uh, bukan NGO tapi terbentuk Nah, uh, beliau mengatakan mengapa, pasti teman-teman uh, di sini saudara-saudara bertanya mengapa seorang pengacara hadir membicarakan tentang HAM karena kasus dalam Bapak Anan Kusna ini ada banyak sekali pelanggaran HAM tapi juga kasus Bapak Anan ini di misalnya dihukum karena urusan-urusan yang berkaitan dengan hukum jadi dengan itu beliau akan bicara di aspek sisi hukum Ya, yeah. in 1945 the war was over and together with a number of countries Indonesia got back on its feet and restored its own sovereignty. As part of that process, they wrote a new constitution in 1945 called the Constitution of the Republic of Indonesia. And this constitution is what supposedly governs everybody in, in Indonesia, gives them their, their rights, set, sets up a government, but sets limits on the, on the government. So the first thing a lawyer does when there's an issue is to look at the, what we call the base law, the fundamental constitution. Now I'll just read a bit from the constitution and copies of these notes are available to, to, to the press afterwards and I'm also happy to answer any questions. Now, chapter 10, article 27 of the constitution of this Republic of Indonesia says, all citizens shall be equal before the law and the government shall be required to respect the law with no exceptions. I'll just repeat that. All citizens shall be equal before the law and the government shall be required to respect the law with no exceptions. Dasarnya, asasnya adalah undang-undang Dan di sini beliau uh, Membacakan Konstitusi Republik Indonesia 1945 dari undang-undang dasar Bab 10 pasal 27 itu satu 
ayat 1 di mana tiap warga negara berkedudukan sama dalam hukum dan pemerintahan dan wajib mendukung menjunjung hukum dan pemerintahan itu dengan tidak ada kecualinya. Another section of the Constitution, Article 28 says every person shall have the right of recognition, guarantees, protection and certainty before a just law and equal treatment before the law. What that means, that's written in legalese, what it means in ordinary language is that the street vendor in this country, the waiters in this restaurant, the people sitting in this room have exactly the same rights as the President of Indonesia. The problem is, Anand was not given those rights. Pada pasal 28D, 28D ayat 1, setiap orang berhak atas pengakuan, jaminan, perlindungan, dan kepastian hukum, serta perlakuan yang sama di depan hukum. Jadi siapapun kita di sini, apakah kita pelayan, ataupun pedagang, uh, uh, pedagang kaki lima, ataupun presiden memiliki hak dan yang sama, tetapi dalam kasus ini Bapak Anak tidak mendapatkan uh, hak dan perlindungan tersebut. I just read a third article from the Constitution. Every person shall have the duty to respect the human rights of others in the orderly life of the community, the nation and the state. And what we're doing is asking the government and the courts to respect the human rights of a man. Pasal 28 J, J ayat 1 mengatakan bahwa setiap orang berkewajiban untuk menghormati hak asasi manusia orang lain dalam tertib kehidupan bermasyarakat, bernegara, dan berbangsa. Dalam kesempatan ini kami menghimbau kepada pemerintah ya, supaya men mengikuti taat kepada apa yang telah dicantumkan pada undang-undang. Now, if we look at the specifics under the Constitution, there are a number of other laws, governing properties, running businesses, holding elections, and a very important part of the law is the criminal law. Um, now, there is a law called the Law of Criminal Procedure, which was passed in 1981, and it says in Article 244, an accused or the public prosecutor may lodge a request for an examination in cassation to the Supreme Court with regard to a judgment in a criminal case rendered as a last resort by a court other than the Supreme Court except with regard to an acquittal. Now I'll just read the last part of that, except with regard to an acquittal. What this law does, because the, the laws of Indonesia, although they were written mainly after 1945, draw on the history. And uh, you, you had the Dutch here for a while, you had the English here for a while, and this is fundamental to what's called English or British law, that a person who is acquitted uh, of, uh, of a charge could walk away free. The person is convicted, the person has the right of appeal to the Supreme Court. What has happened here is that when the Constitution and these laws were written, it was deliberately put in that an appeal can be had, that a prosecutor cannot appeal against an acquittal. So if they are not guilty, the government just has to wear it, and that's it. In Anand's case, this was ignored. They're not only their Constitution, but a specific law, the law of criminal procedure. Uh, Uh, mengikir dari kitab undang-undang acara pidana undang-undang tahun 1981 pasal 244 terdakwa atau penuntut umum dapat mengajukan permohonan kasasi ke mahkamah agung dalam perkara tindak pidana sebagai upaya akhir hukum ke mahkamah agung kecuali pada kasus putusan bebas jadi uh, beliau juga menjelaskan bahwa uh, kita telah meng warna-warisi undang-undang dari jaman-jaman Belanda dan di negara-negara yang lain seperti itu uh, nam uh, namun dalam perkembangannya pasti ada tambahan-tambahan lain tapi di sini juga beliau menjelaskan bahwa seseorang yang sudah mendapatkan keputusan bebas itu kalau sudah dinyatakan bebas seharusnya tidak boleh dikasasi namun pada kenyataannya pada kasus Bapak Anda ini justru pernyataan bebas itu langsung dianulir dan dinyatakan Now it might be thought, because I'm a lawyer, 
I'll read it all and I'll interpret it in a particular way. So I thought well, what I should do is put it in what we would call in England plain English, put it in plain language. So I thought to myself, where would I get a plain language explanation of what this law is? And it came to me, what about the Indonesian government website and their own official publications? Because let's put it in very simple language, what the law means. So I looked up what uh, the Indonesian government says the judicial system is, and it says, and these are their, their own words translated into English, if there is a possibility of bringing a case for appeal to a court of second instance, the cassation will not succeed. In other words, it is impossible to request cassation on the decisions of the district court of first instance. What it says in plain language, if you go to the district court and you're acquitted, the prosecution has to, what we uh, say in Australia, they have to wear it. They cannot appeal it. But they did. And I'm quoting exactly what the government has written as to what the law means. In the same publication it says, no appeal can be filed on a judgment of acquittal or a judgment of dismissal on all charges. And then finally, no cassation can be filed for a judgment of acquittal. So in three separate sections of the explanation as to how the judicial system works in Indonesia, the government itself is saying, once you're acquitted, you, that's it, the prosecution can't appeal. Now this is not unusual, it's a fundamental of the system of law uh, in, the, in the United Kingdom, in New Zealand, uh, in the United States, in Canada, in Australia, and dozens and dozens of other countries that follow what you might call the common law tradition, that people have rights and the government is not all powerful. Di sini uh, beliau menjelaskan bahwa untuk mempelajari sistem hukum di Indonesia dan karena seorang beliau kadang bahasanya suka uh, sangat teknis ya jadi beliau ingin menjelaskan dalam bahasa awam biasa deh bukan dalam bahasa awam. Nah untuk itu beliau juga mengunjungi website-website uh, pemerintahan yang berkaitan dengan judicial system sistem judicial dalam negara kita. Nah di situ ada yang menjelaskan bahwa Jika ada kemungkinan untuk membawa sebuah kasus untuk banding ke pengadilan tinggi, tingkat berikutnya, maka harus dibawa ke pengadilan tinggi dulu, tidak bisa langsung kasasi. Dengan kata lain, adalah kemustahilan untuk memohon kasasi langsung dari pengadilan negeri. Nah, di sini juga beliau menjelaskan bahwa di dalam Common Law of uh, Tradition, dan berarti banyak uh, Common Law of Tradition itu, Ya, tradisi hukum secara umum yang sudah diterap, yang diterapkan oleh berbagai banyak negara, misalnya Australia, Inggris, Amerika, dan negara-negara Eropa dan juga negara beberapa negara Asia lainnya, selalu mengatakan setiap manusia mempunyai hak jika sudah dinyatakan bebas tidak boleh di, istilahnya dirampas kembali kebebasan tersebut. Nah, tetapi dalam kasus ini pemerintah sendiri malah dalam kasus ini adalah uh, oknum-oknum dari Mahkamah Agung ya Mahkamah Agung yaitu Hakim Agungnya justru melanggar apa yang telah dinyatakan dari undang-undang tersebut. One of the other things that uh, they mentioned in the same government publication is everyone has equality before the law and they refer to due process of law. Now those of you who watch American television shows uh, you will be familiar with people standing up saying I demand due process because it's written into their constitution and they copied it from the people who settled the United States and it was copied into the Indonesian law in 1945. Now lest someone say well that's 1945 we drew on old traditions this is a new world things have changed so we're going to change things. If you want to change your constitution you do it properly. You have a referendum, you ask the people, because the constitution represents the people. You just don't do it by a ministry or an act or a public servant or a civil servant or a prosecutor saying, I don't like this constitution, so I'll ignore it. Now, Indonesia is a major player in the modern world and they have agreed to an international covenant called the International Covenant 
on civil and political rights. And this covenant, which is an international treaty, provides, provides for a fair trial and an appeal if a person is convicted. Um, it's now become not just national law or the law of one country, it's become international law and standards. There is a move throughout the world to bring fairness standards and we're not asking the constitution be changed or the law be changed, we just ask that the law be followed by the government. Uh, semua sistem peradilan di negara manapun dan untuk orang semua warga negara di dunia ini meminta tidak perlu mengubah konstitusi semua gua mereka hanya kita hanya berhak bahwa apa yang sudah ditulis di konstitusi itu mohon diterapkan ya pada intinya seperti itu there is an international court of justice and there are moves for this matter is not resolved in Indonesia you can go to the international court of justice Now, Indonesia is a member of the Association of Southeast Asian Nations, commonly known as ASEAN, and they have an intergovernmental commission on human rights. This matter is being referred to that commission. And the constitution, the publications, the public voice, the international voice of Indonesia is that we respect human rights. All we're asking is that Anand Christmas human rights be respected, that he be free, because the world is watching, and it's watching very closely. Sistem peradilan ini akan berlaku di seluruh dunia ya. Jadi kalau tidak dilaksanakan di Indonesia, dunia akan memantaunya. Karena Indonesia juga bagian dari ASEAN, di mana mereka juga Indonesia setuju dengan hal-hal uh, yang bersifat uh, apa penghormatan hak asasi manusia? Jadi Indonesia mesti mengikuti apa yang sudah menjadi aturan di ASEAN. Jadi ini sebuah uh, pesan kepada sistem peradilan Indonesia bahwa sebenarnya akan memantau kita. Ya, jadi Indonesia tidak sendiri lagi, sebenarnya akan mengamati sistem peradilan kita.